video, I'm going to do something that might not interest a lot of you, um, but I hope that you can still enjoy the whispering. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm going to rank all Zelda games in the order of my least favorite to my favorite. I really wanted to do a Zelda facts video because it was requested by a lot of people, but I recorded one. It's hard to find facts about Zelda because most of the facts were just details on how the games are played. But if you're a Zelda player, that's not really a fact. Like, you know those things. And then some facts were more obscure things that I thought were really interesting, but I ended up having to do so much cutting in that video because it took me... I had to look for a lot of websites on the spot because the ones that I had seen so it just ended up going nowhere. I might do it again and see if I can do like a, a good amount of proper research before I start recording. Um, but I ended up not being able to use it. So today I wanted to do just like a ranking of all my games. I've seen a lot of Zelda gamers on YouTube do these kind of rankings and they're usually very different from mine. So I want to just let you know the criteria that I'm sentimental value. Some games just mean more to me than others. I am not ranking them, by the way, based on what I think is the best, like the, the most well-created game. It has all to do with how much I love them. So that's that. Two, um, dungeons. <laughs> I don't like dungeons. Um, most people's biggest gripe with the newest installment, Breath of Some Zelda games are needlessly difficult, and that definitely plays in my ranking. So I have the um, Zelda timeline here. I'm not going to be reading from it. I just want to have it here in case I need to like reference something about the time, but I don't want to get too into detail about these games. Um, but there is a timeline, and it's, it's what I love a lot about. Zelda games is that a game that was created only a few years ago is actually the very first game in the timeline. It's what started everything. All these games, no matter how many years apart they were released, are linked somehow. And some games that were released a lot later actually in the timeline come before games that were released earlier. And I think that's just ingeniously done. I took some notes too, but I'm not overly prepared for this video, like I never am, but I'm, let's just start. Um, so there are 16 games in total. I'm only talking about the Nintendo games. There were some games released on like PC, but they're really shit. So I'm just talking about the Nintendo games. Three of them I will not be talking about because I never played them, and they are four swords. Four Swords Adventures and Minish Cap. Minish Cap apparently was a pretty good game, but I never played the portable games like on Game Boys, the portable consoles, until I bought a 3DS and Nintendo released an emulator for the 3DS and re-released a lot of old Zelda games, including all of the handheld ones except for Minish Cap. I don't know if it was because it was mainly created by Capcom, a different company, and they didn't allow for it, but it wasn't re-released. There's a child crying outside. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, which I'm kind of sad about because I, I hear that it's a really good game, but I don't think I'm ever going to get to play it because it was on a really old Game Boy, and I, I'm not going to spend hundreds of euros on like a collector's edition to buy it. So, so that leaves me with so in number 13, I have put the very first game, The Legend of Zelda. Um, it 
it's too difficult. I'm just gonna put it out there. It is one of those games that is more difficult than it needs to be. I don't actually know how I ever played it. I remember I played every Zelda game in chronological order. You know, I was... I think I was about six or seven when the first Zelda game was released. I don't remember playing it that young, but I definitely remember playing it with my brother and my dad. We each had our profiles. We each played the game. We would watch each other play it. Um, it was very enjoyable. And my dad, I don't remember this, but my dad is adamant that we finished it, and I believe him. But I recently replayed it on the 3DS, and I was like, how? Did anyone ever finish this game without a guide? And I'm sure we did, but at some point you have to burn a random bush in the middle of a million bushes to find a temple or a dungeon. And I'm like, where is the clue as to what bush you have to burn? I don't get it. Like, I had to look up a walkthrough on YouTube to find it. I had to look up quite a few of them for that game. I just did. I, I don't know. It's a really difficult game, and how strong you are compared to how strong the monsters are is also not equal, because I died a lot in that game. It's just, I mean, it's the first Zelda game, it'll always be special to me, and I do want to point out that as much as I complain about some of these, I do love them all. It's just, it, you know, it was the first one, it's obviously not going to be the best one, um, it's my least favorite. At number 12 for me is the second Zelda game, The Adventures of, or The Adventure of Link. The only reason that that is not in last place is because of sentimental value, and it's, I don't even really know why, but for years, I was adamant that this was my favorite Zelda game of all time. I remembered it that way. I remember telling my dad just a few years ago, oh, you know, that second Zelda where Link becomes big when he walks through caves. That is my favorite Zelda game. I, I always loved that. And then I replayed it on the 3DS and I was like, this game is shit. <laughs> it really is. Um, again, I still, again, I love it, but it's, it's very difficult. Again, you can walk through random walls and you don't know where they are. You die constantly. The graphics are really poor. This game, for all intents and purposes, should be in last place, but because I have such fond memories of it as a child, for whatever reason, it is in 12th place for me. Uh, then in 11th place, I have Spirit Tracks. Um, Spirit Tracks was released on the DS, I think I have it. I played it on the 3DS, but from a 2DS cartridge. I borrowed it from a colleague. I don't love it that much. Um, a lot of people thought it was better than Phantom Hourglass, so I wanted to play it, but I really didn't agree. I'm quite fond of Phantom Hourglass, and I'm not of Spirit Jacks. I will, full disclosure, did not finish the game. Um, so I can't judge it in its entirety, but I got kind of bored with it. Um, I needed to find bombs that I, that were taking me a really long time to find. I still haven't gotten them all. And I kind of just gave up on it a little bit to constant driving around with the train from place to place. And it's not, I think, as big of a world as Phantom Hourglass. I just, it bothered me. Um, I thought it was kind of a boring game, to be honest. But maybe I need to finish it and then give my opinion. Could be. Then in 10th, 9th, and 8th place are all games that I find very, very similar in gameplay. The first two are the Oracle games, but while most people group them together, I will separate them because there's one that I clearly love more than the other. So... In 10th place, I have Oracle of Ages. Um, I really like the Oracle games. I don't think they get enough credit. Um, they, they were actually quite difficult to play the first 
first time, but not overly difficult. Like they were kind of just the perfect level of difficulty. The graphics were all right for the time they were created. I like Oracle of Ages because you have to use the mechanic where you travel back in time and do something so that you can access something in the future. You know, whatever you can't access yet in the future, you have to find a place to go back in time and do something there so you can access it. I really like that mechanic. The only reason that it's lower than Seasons is because that gets a little bit tedious after a while. So then in ninth place, I have Oracle of Seasons. I just like that more. You stay in the same timeline, but you have to change seasons with a rod, but it, it's linear, so you only get one season to begin with, and you have to collect seasons as you go along, and there are certain areas that you can't access unless you're in a particular season, because a tree has to grow, or a pile of snow has to show up for you to be able to get on it, and you know, there's one area where you change it, but then as soon as you walk into the next area, it's back to a different season, so it's a pretty complicated game. And I had a lot of enjoyment playing it. A lot of people put them together because originally they were linked. I don't think they are in the emulator. I haven't noticed that. But on the original Game Boy that they were released on, they were linked so that if you played one, some of the things you did would carry over into the other one. And I think they're great. So... Link's Awakening, which is being re-released in September for the Switch in, an, in a remake. I really like the graphics. A lot of people were, like didn't in the beginning, but I, I think it suits Link's Awakening. Um, needless to say, I talk about spoilers in these games, so if you don't want to know that, click out. I maybe should have said that sooner. But Link's Awakening is basically set in a dream. Link is caught in the dream of the windfish and has to try and wake up the windfish so he can get out. And you see a lot of characters in that game from the Mario world, which is very different. And it's cool. I kind of grouped it together with the Oracle games because they were released on the same platform and they have a very similar style of play, I think. There's only one thing that bothers me or that worries me about Link's Awakening on the Switch, and it's that I don't find it a very long game to play. I don't know if it's because I've played it like three times in the past four years or so, but I finish it in about three weeks, and I don't want to spend 60 euro on a Zelda game to finish it in three weeks. I do believe that they've made some changes to the game, so it's not exactly the same. And I'm hoping that since it's been maybe two years since I've played it, that I'll have forgotten a lot of things. But I am worried that I'm going to finish it very quickly. Um, but it's a great game. It's very different. It's got a nice story and a nice, um, you know, different setting. It is also, according to a lot of people, the only game that doesn't actually mention Zelda. However... And you can correct me in the comments because I'm sure I'm wrong, but I don't remember her being mentioned in the Oracle games either. The Oracle games have a different princess you need to rescue, and I don't remember Zelda being mentioned in it, but could be wrong. Okay. So at number seven, I have Phantom Hourglass. It was also a 2DS game, or just like a DS game. And I loved it, and a lot of people don't. Um, I understand why, okay? So, A, you have to use the stylus for everything, including moving Link along. I like the stylus that you have to draw, like, symbols to open doors, for example. But it is a bit annoying to use it for everything in the game. And you have, a lot of people hate it that in the Temple of the Ocean King, you had to redo it a million times because in the beginning you can only access a certain part of it. And then as you do dungeons, you get more items and you can access further parts of it. You also get 
get a um, hourglass with sand in it, and if it runs out, you basically die. I mean, you can walk around a bit, but you lose a lot of hearts. And you get more and more sand each time, so you can go deeper into the dungeon. There's also, the more items you get, the more shortcuts you can create, so that you don't have to do every level for as long. But a lot of people thought it was so tedious that they really dislike this game. I really didn't mind it. I kind of liked doing that. I found it a very big challenge to see if I could complete it within the set time and to find everything. I found it an incredible puzzle and I really enjoyed it. I also enjoyed the boat and the sailing around to islands and the fact that you could pimp your boat. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I honestly really liked Phantom Hourglass. I want to see for a second where it is. Uh, okay, it's after Wind Waker on the timeline, which I find interesting. I thought it would have been before. Um, okay, anyway, in number six is for me the Wind Waker. I was kind of disappointed in this game. I'm not going to a lot of YouTubers who have done these um, rankings have it as one of their favorite games. And I remember, and if you're watching, I hope I'm not offending you, I remember asking uh, for some advice in one of my previous videos and one of, and someone replied and said, I hope, you know, it's one of my favorite games. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. But I, I don't, Honestly, I don't know how I feel about this game. I liked it a lot. I liked the story. I liked the islands again and the water. And I liked some of the dungeons, but I felt, again, I finished it in three weeks. And I have a really bad habit of looking up guides on YouTube. And I was adamant that I was not going to do it for this game. I wanted to finish it on my own. And I did. I didn't look up anything. Um, but I, I finished in three weeks and I didn't even play every day. And I was really disappointed in that because my dad was watching me play it. And when I ended up going to Ganon, I was like, hang on, is this it? That, that can't be it. Like I'm not fighting the big boss yet, right? Because I barely played this game, but I did. And I will admit that afterwards I found out I didn't do everything I didn't complete. I think I only got about half the sea chart, the treasure charts, but I mean, most of them were rupees. I didn't, you know, want to bother finding all of them. I don't even know if I completed every single side quest, so I'm aware that I didn't play the entire game to detail. But I did most of it, and I fi it finished really quickly. Nevertheless, I enjoyed the game. I enjoyed the characters in it. But I was a bit disappointed with how fast I finished it and with how small all the villages were. Windfall Island is the biggest, and it really isn't that big. So, I don't know. I, I, for the fact that it's a lot of people's favorite game, I felt a little bit disappointed with it. Can't help it. Then in number five, I have Twilight Princess. <sighs> it is one of two Zelda games that I never want to replay. As much as I loved it, it is the darkest Zelda game. A lot of people say it's Majora's Mask. I disagree. I think it is Twilight Princess. The one thing I will say for this game is it is my personal favorite intro to any Zelda game. It has probably the longest intro to a Zelda game if you don't count the Great Plateau in Breath of the Wild. The fact that you, you know, get your horse and you have to go around your town and do things like little side quests for people. You have to herd goats. Like it's a pretty long intro for a game before you actually see any action. And I really enjoy that. But the fact that you have to constantly change into a wolf is really annoying after a while. Um, and um, the reason that I don't really like dungeons is because I don't like fighting monsters. They creep me out a lot of the time. And it gives me a lot of anxiety. And I know 
it's a game and they're not actually going to come and kill me, but it gives me a lot of anxiety and I can't help it. There are some Zelda games where I feel stressed out the entire time that I'm playing them because I am anticipating certain monsters and it's not worth it to me anymore. And Twilight Princess is one of them. I was watching some people play the HD remake on YouTube and I thought, man, what an amazing game this was. I do want to replay it. And then they get to the Arbiter's Grounds and I'm like, no, thank you. I'm never replaying this game. Which is interesting because the majority of my memories of this game as a child or teenager, I don't know how old I was when it was released, um, are from Arbiter's Grounds. So it definitely left an impression on me, but it's such a creepy dungeon. Gosh, I don't know. It's a really creepy game. However, I can acknowledge that it's a fantastic game. I actually feel kind of sad that I feel so stressed with it because I would love to replay it. It is an amazing game. It's also a very long game to play, um, but unfortunately, it creeps me out. Also, a lot of people have Midna as their favorite companion. I mean, out of all the companions, I guess she is the, the best one. She's very sarcastic. I don't always like that in a character, but she's pretty cool. So, plus points for Twilight Princess. I do think it's an amazing game. I'm just too stressed out when I play it, I guess. Um, then in number four, I have Majora's Mask. I love Majora's Mask. The only thing that I don't like about it is the, the time, the three-day countdown, which is obviously the whole point of the game. If you don't know this game, it has a three-day countdown, so you only get three days to do everything, and then time resets, and everything you've done resets. The only thing that doesn't reset is if you have completed a dungeon. Um... For example, in the mountains, the entrance will reseal itself to the mountain area, but once you've completed certain things, you can warp to it, and you don't have to, like, redo the whole entrance. And once you've completed the dungeon, it remains completed. You can... the, the boss kind of re resurrects, but you don't have to redo the whole dungeon. Um... If, if you're done with that entire piece of land, then you don't have to go back there, basically. But the fact that you have to do, like, the deeds with this, uh, the, the, the scrubs, um, and you have to, you know, to collect pieces of heart, you have to do that, you know, every time, over and over again. Get the moonstone, get the deed from the town one, get the deed from the swamp one. Like, that gets a little bit tedious, and the worst is when time runs out, when you're halfway through a dungeon. I got to the very end of the water dungeon, which is a very complicated one. Once you've entered the boss room and he kills you, you get a warp point, so that when time resets, you can go to the start of the dungeon and just warp straight to the boss. I didn't make it that far. I think I got just to the boss room when time ran out and he didn't kill me and there was no war point. So I had to redo the whole water dungeon and it took me so long to get through it the first time because I was very confused about where I had to go that I didn't exactly remember how to do it the second time so I only barely made it the second time. Oh my god, I was so upset when, when it crapped out. So yeah, but I do love that game. I love that game. It's one that I will replay. None of the monsters in it really creep me out. I love the fact that you put on a mask and actually fully change into a different person. You get to play as a band with all the different instruments at the same time. Like, I love that. I think that is just, I think it's just really cool. It also has one of the best side quests, which is the wedding mask quest. Um... I think it's also part of why I love this game. The side quests are actually pretty difficult because of the time, uh, because of the three-day time thing. You have to make sure that you catch people at the right time because if you're too late, you have to wait until time resets and restart the quest. 
podcast and I think that's really cool um so yeah I really love Majora's Mask um in third place I have Ocarina of Time and it is the second game that I don't think I'll ever replay and I have replayed it a few times on the 3DS but I am so stressed out every time um a lot of people have this as their favorite game because it changed the way, you know, gaming works and it was like the pioneer in 3D gaming, blah, blah. I get all that and I get that it's amazing. But for a lot of people, this was also the first Zelda game they played and it isn't for me. I started when the first ever Zelda game was released. So I can acknowledge that it is a game changer, literally, and that it is an incredible well put together game it's just not my favorite for a couple of reasons one wall masters <sighs> i hate wall masters so much they are claws that fall from the ceiling and grab link and put them back to the beginning of the temple they are not that bad but in they appear in a lot of different zelda games as oh my god i forgot a game why is it not on the timeline? Oh, this timeline was created before that game was released. Oh, darn. All right, I'll talk about that game in a bit and where it fits into my ranking. I just remembered it because of the Wallmaster. So it appears in a lot of games, mostly coming either just like a little claw through the walls or as a shadow hanging link but in ocarina of time they come in with a whoosh you hear this whoosh sound like really loud and you know that there's one hanging above you and you don't know when it's gonna drop and it freaks me out and they're pretty like if you can make them fall next to you you just defeat them with your sword and they're gone but the whoosh sound it it's the feeling of something chasing me that I can't see that creeps me out so much. So when I replay Ocarina of Time, I usually replay it until right after the water temple and then I stop because while they do appear in the forest temple, I know the two rooms they appear in and I can just run through them and not even hear the sound. But they really, really creep me out. And the second reason that this game creeps me out is the lens of truth. You need to use it to see invisible rooms and invisible monsters. And if there's anything that creeps me out to no end, it's invisible monsters. I have the same thing with Twilight Princess when Link changes into a wolf. There are some monsters you can only see with wolves, with the wolf's senses. And I hate that. I really, really hate that. Um, Majora's Mask does that a little bit with the, the Goron area, but it doesn't have any hidden monsters, just a couple of hidden doors, um, so it's not that bad, but I, it does really creep me out when they do invisible things. Incidentally, the Wall Masters appear in the exact same fashion in Majora's Mask, but only in one area, and it's not that bad. They appear in almost, like after the water temple, I think they appear in every dungeon in Ocarina of Time. And it creeps me out a lot. But I mean, it is an incredible game. It, it's a very long game, regardless of how many times you've played it. It'll take you a while. I think it might have the most dungeons of any Zelda game. It has a lot of them. And I love the towns. Um, you know, Kakariko Village, Clock Town before it was mangled. Um, I really love it. Uh, you get Epona in this game for the first time. Quite possibly the only time. Do you get Epona in another game aside from through Amiibo in Breath of the Wild? I can't think of any other game. Oh, uh, yeah, Toy, Twilight Princess. Um, but yeah, you get Epona for the first time, which is, you know, love. And I just, I really, really love this game. It is a great game. If, again, similar to Twilight Princess, if it didn't creep me out so much, I would replay them a lot because they are fantastic. Um, and, yeah, just everything about it. The ocarina that you have to play, different songs, 
to get into different areas of the time travel between the past and seven years into the future. I just think it's it's an awesome game. It really is. Now, in second place, which my number one is a very controversial game. I'm just going to put it out there. Actually, no, before I get to my top two, I'm going to insert a link between worlds because I forgot about that one. And when I was practicing this video in my head, it was included, but I, I took notes based off the timeline and it's not on the timeline. Um, where am I going to put a link between worlds? I think I would put it between the Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. So in spot number, if we're pushing everything back, it would be in sixth place. I really loved A Link Between Worlds. It was an incredibly inventive game. It was one of the first open world games in where you could decide yourself what order you were doing dungeons in. I loved the My My Side Quest. Maybe a lot of people didn't, but I really did. I loved the fact that you had to go find the My My Children everywhere. If there's one thing, well, maybe two things about it that I didn't like as much is that maybe there weren't enough side quests. You know, the Mai Mai were really the only one. You had to find Gully, but he ended up being a sage, so you didn't really have to find him. And, you know, you can find a Master Gore to upgrade your sword, but you find those in dungeons. It's not like it's an actual side quest. So maybe that was lacking a bit. It's also an incredibly quick game. I know I've played it a few times now, but I finished it in a week, which is really not that long. Part of it is because it's an easy game, and it's also part of the reason I love it. None of the dungeons stress me out because none of them are that difficult, and none of them have that creepy monsters. They have wall masters, but they just hang above Link like a shadow with no sound, and you can see them hanging there. Um, but yeah, it's the dungeons are very easy to get through. But some of them are really, really cool. Uh, I also like, like and dislike the fact that you can rent or buy all the items without finding them in dungeons. I don't know how I feel about that. But I thought it was, it was a, a, an extra part of the puzzle that you didn't know what item that dungeon or what dungeon that item belonged to and that you visited a random dungeon and you're like, how, what item do I need to get in here? Or do I need to get through here? So I thought that was interesting. I really liked it. I also, my God, I forgot a link to the past. Are you kidding me? Where, like, where did I go wrong in counting these? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There is sixteen games on here without a link between worlds and breath of the wild. So it's actually eighteen, so I have fourteen games. Or fifteen games, and I only wrote down thirteen. Ah shucks. So I'm going to insert a link to the past. Actually, probably, um, I don't know, I can't. Well, you know what, probably right after a link between worlds. So that would be my number six, dear Lord. Um, I love a link to the past. I think it is great. It is also a very difficult Zelda game, but I don't think it is needlessly difficult. And it, there, it's, you know, a link, the reason I thought of it is because a link between worlds is built on a link to the past. It is the same, kind of the same world, except in a link between worlds, another thing I love about it, you can change into a painting and just walk along walls, which I think is fantastic. And you visit a different world. As we're in a link to the past, you go between the past and the present. Um, I replayed it on the 3DS and kind of forgot about how difficult it was, but it is, you get a lot of gameplay out of it, even after having replayed it 
I still have to search every time because there are things I forgot. So, for the fact that it was the third Zelda game I believe ever released and that, you know, the graphics weren't necessarily the best, it is one of the best Zelda games, even though many games came after, it is one of the best Zelda games. And I do really love replaying it. There's very little I can fault with that game, to be honest. But in terms of... It holds up well. But in terms of, like, graphics and how a game is created, it's not as great to me as, like, Twilight Princess or an Ocarina of Time. But I do think it's, it's an incredible game. So, top two. In second place for me is Breath of the Wild. I love this game. For me, it is a fully-fledged Zelda game. When it first came out, when I saw the trailer of it, I was like, oh no, that doesn't look like a Zelda game. I am not going to like this. And it took me a year, almost, to play it because I was broke and I couldn't afford to buy a Switch or the game. So I didn't start playing it until January 2018. It was released in March 2017. But oh my god, do I love it. It is... I do think it is a Zelda game. It is what the future of Zelda games is going to look like. A lot of people didn't like that it didn't have dungeons. I loved that it didn't have dungeons. I loved the shrines. And my favorite part of a Zelda game is the puzzle solving. It's the fact that you have to go looking for things and you have to go on quests. And it's the searching. And all the shrines were pretty much puzzles that you had to solve. Some had a couple of guardians, but they're nothing. Um, there is no monster in this game that creeps me out. The first time I fought a Lionel, yeah, I was stressed for sure. I still am kind of, I, I'm still not very good at fighting Lionels or, um, Stone Dallases. But everything else is kind of a, a walk in the park once you've done it. I, I'm very soon starting my fourth replay of it. I, every time that I see people on YouTube play clips of it, I miss it. I miss playing it because I think it is such a fun game. It is long. It is like months of gameplay, especially the first time, but even replaying it if you want to do everything, it can still be months of gameplay. Uh, a million side quests. Oh my god, the most side quests of any Zelda game, which I love. Uh, side quests are one of my favorite things to do. Um, I don't know. I just love it. Do I miss specific items? Yeah, I do. Um, but it, like, the, everything else in the game more than makes up for it. The paraglider is my favorite thing. I love flying in that game. I actually purposefully climb up really high things all the time just so I can fly off them. I love it. Um, and you can kind of cheat your way through the game too if you have the DLC because the first time I bought the DLC after I finished playing it. But now it loads when you start the game and I always go and get Majora's Mask very early on and it makes most monsters not recognize you and not attack you. So you can get through that whole game almost without getting attacked, which I love. I don't know. I love that you can do things however you want in that game, and I've seen gamer YouTubers be so creative with this game. I find it a joy to watch, and I think the makers didn't even anticipate how many different or how inventive gamers would be in trying to get through this game. When I first went to Zora's Domain, I did it the way they intended. I think I, I activated the tower. I flew down to Sidon, and I went through along the whole path with a lot of monsters, fighting a lot to get to it. And I was watching someone play it on YouTube, and a lot of people commented and said, oh, I didn't even know this path existed, like I accessed it differently, and I thought, really? How? Like, it's really high up and it rains all the time. So, on my next replay, I was like, challenge accepted. I'm going to try to find another way in. And I did, but there's so many different ways. Like, I never did the path to 
Goron City because I found it too many monsters. I found, I just climbed all the way up somehow. I love it. I love that there's so many different things. It is completely open world. You can do whatever you want at whatever time you want. I love it. I hope that Breath of the Wild 2 is equally good. I know they're probably planning to introduce dungeons to it because a lot of people complained about the dungeons. I hope they don't do too many or at least not too scary, but we'll see. So then my favorite Zelda game is Skyward Sword. It is a very, um, pol it, it's a game with the most polarity. Uh, you either hate it or you love it. A lot of people really don't like it. Um, partially because of the graphics, which I love. I've n like, I kind of like the, the kind of anime style graphics, but a lot of people had issues with the motion controls on the Wii. It is one of my, fa it is one of the reasons that it's my favorite game. The fact that if I wave my sword, I'm actually waving my sword and like holding my shield up and everything. I never had issues with the motion controls. I don't know why people did. Occasionally, it goes out of balance. You have to recenter it, but I never had real issues with it. So that was not a problem for me. My god, I just love this game. I love that it has a giant backstory, or at least a giant story. It is probably the only Zelda game where you actually want to rescue Zelda because you like her. She's very close friends with Link, and you learn her story. I will say, backtracking to Breath of the Wild, a lot of people thought it lacked story. I didn't. I don't really understand why people thought that. You had to collect a lot of memories, which told you a big backstory. Yes, Zelda was not likable in it, but I think that came with the voice. I think whoever voiced her was not the right choice for Zelda. Um... But I thought you had a huge story. You learned a lot about legend and about what happened with the calamity and how the champions died and just your relationship with Zelda. I thought it was a really... And the fact that Zelda kind of resented Link for being the chosen hero when she wanted to defeat the calamity and she thought it was her task and she felt so defeated and I thought it was a great story. Um, but I do think Skyward Sword probably has the biggest story of all Zelda games. It is the very first game on the timeline. It was released as one of the more recent games, but it is the game that started all of Zelda. It started in the sky. At the end of it, Link and Zelda go down to Earth and start Hyrule on land. So, and it is also the game where they defeat Demise, the originator of all the demon kings, I guess, well, he was called the demon king, and he puts a curse on Zelda and Link where they will for all eternity be reincarnated with the same fate. So, for those of you who don't know it, you the Link that you see in each Zelda game is not the same Link. In some games it is, but in most games he is a reincarnation of the Skyward Sword one, as well as Zelda is a reincarnation of the Skyward Sword Zelda, and Ganon is a reincarnation of Demise, the, the, the demon in Skyward Sword, so it is the game that started everything, and I love it, I, I love the, the motion controls, I kind of love Skyloft, uh, the Lanaru Desert with the time shift stones where you can change the Baron sand into a green flowing area I think is fantastic. I love the beetle that you can fly with it. It's also why I love the paraglider. I love flying things in Zelda games. Um, I actually like a lot of the dungeons, which is surprising, but I do. I, I think some of the dungeons are incredibly fun and well built. Levias in the cloud that you have to like rescue him from Side. I think that is such a good storyline. Uh, pumpkin Landing, like, I don't know. There's so much about it that I love. I can't even think of one thing that I would fault this game on. And I'm sure a lot of people do, but not for me. I love, love, love this game. Um, I no longer own a Wii. I sold it years ago, so I don't have the game. Um, my dad still has a Wii in Belgium in the game, so whenever I go to Belgium, I replay it. 
is willing to sell his Wii U to me and I'll just buy the Wii version because it's compatible with the Wii U and own it again because I'd love to own it again. I kind of, I love replaying Breath of the Wild all the time, but I also used to replay Skyward Sword all the time and I kind of miss playing that. So, um, yeah, that was that. Oh my God, I rambled a lot as I usually do. Um, I was so much better prepared for this video in my mind than I ended up being because, like I said, I practiced this video in my head last night 